Hello everyone, this is Dr. Anna Kabeca. Welcome to Couch Talk with my special guest today, Dr. Amy Myers. Great to have you here, Amy. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be on your Couch Talk. I know, this is comfy. I'm in the chair today, but I usually do the, the couch and a glass of wine. But since I'm detoxing, detoxing with my uh, group and my audience, I've been really, ah, no wine, no tequila, and... I don't know. And it is only 2.30 in the afternoon. So. <laughs> I know, right? It's 21 days. We're actually on day 12 with my group right now, so it's really exciting. And it's a okay. pertinent topic that what we're going to talk with you today about, and um, I'll tell everyone a little bit about you. But first, for our listeners, my Couch Talk. I designed Couch Talk to be an intimate place for intimate conversation where it is shameless, guiltless, and open to all conversations. So we're really here to inspire pleasure, gratitude, health, and healing. As you know, I'm a board certified in Emory University trained gynecologist and obstetrician, also board certified in anti-aging and regenerative medicine, an expert in functional medicine, women's health, and hormone therapy. I lecture and train physicians all around the world, which has been uh, just such a blessing. I give the little disclaimer that the opinions expressed during our interview are published for educational and informational purposes only and are not intended as a diagnosis, treatment, or a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, and treatment. Please consult a local physician or other healthcare professional for, for your specific healthcare and or medical needs or concerns. So today, really excited to have Dr. Amy Myers here with us today. She is the author of the book, The Autoimmune Solution, and she is a specialist in autoimmune diseases. Her career was set in motion by her own experience dealing with autoimmune issues. Dr. Myers graduated cum laude from Honors College at University of South Carolina and attended medical school at Louisiana State University Health Sciences Center and completed her residency in emergency medicine at the University of Maryland. She founded the nationally renowned Functional Medicine Center called Austin Ultra Health and currently serves as its medical director. So, Amy, it's great to have you here today, and I know you've been nonstop with your book going out and your autoimmune summit that you've been going on. Tell us how you're doing. Uh, I'm doing pretty well under all the circumstances and also planning a wedding in five short weeks. So uh, it's been a little crazy in my life, but luckily I have great support staff and team and fiance that are you know, helping me get it all done. Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, I'm very excited for you. I yeah. met, um, for our audience, I met Amy back at a functional medicine conference, but we'd known each other through the circles we travel in, you know, some of the most brilliant minds and kept hearing about Dr. Amy Myers that I had to meet her, I had to meet her and had the great fortune of meeting you a couple years back. So looking yeah. at actually coming to your hometown, to Austin, yes. for the medicine conference on genetics this year. I know. I'm excited to have everybody on my turf. I know. Good. You're going to have to show us around. Oh, well, well, tell us, Amy, you have been, you've been also on the Dr. Oz show, radio, television, just spreading the word about how to empower our immune system and this whole autoimmune disease controversy. So let's talk about autoimmune diseases first, um, because what we see is this explosion of lupus, MS, psoriasis. So that's a condition that people don't necessarily associate with the GI tract. And we're just seeing all these autoimmune disorders. So talk to us about this explosion in autoimmune diseases. So there are between 50 and 75 million Americans estimated to have a diagnosis of at least one autoimmune disease and 150 million people worldwide. We believe that number is really underreported and I can get into the reasons why. Um, and we've seen this really the rates of autoimmunity triple in the last 50 years. And that's not better technology to diagnose. That's true diagnoses that have happened. So something's got to be going on, right? Our genetics have not really changed. And so, you know, we believe that there are environmental factors going on that are really creating this epidemic in autoimmunity diagnosis. And, you know, I talk about it in my book, Twin Studies uh, of of identical twins really show that 25% is genetics and 75% is the environment. And that's what I really talk about in my book is those five environmental factors or the four pillars in my book that are leading to this epidemic and autoimmunity. 
and at the same time can help reverse autoimmunity when you're able to identify those and really tackle each one of those issues and get symptom free and medication free. Mm, yeah, that's fantastic. An excellent resource. And I'll have you talk about the four pillars that you put forth in your book and also your method, which is remarkably easy to follow, right? And everyone can do it very safe and incredibly effective. So Amy, first talk about, you know, your, a little bit about your story and your background, how you came to uncover these issues and the links that are tying all these autoimmune diseases together, right? It's not just here's MS over here, here's lupus over here, here's Raynaud's over here, psoriasis. I mean, they're all linked together with a common underlying thread. So can you tell us a little bit, share us a little bit about your journey? Sure. So I have an entire chapter um, of my personal journey with autoimmunity in the book. So, you know, I'm going to give a little brief history here, but certainly I, I share my full story, um, you know, no, no holding back in my book. Um, my second year of medical school, I uh, was having panic attacks and losing a lot of weight and had tremors and weakness and insomnia and not going to go into all the details, but ultimately after sort of being coerced into going to see the doctor and being told I was kind of crazy second year medical student, you know, just having, thinking I have every disease that I'm learning about, um, later to find out that I actually had diagnosed, uh, had been diagnosed with Graves disease, which is an overactive thyroid and an autoimmune condition. Again, I go into the details of all the things that I tried prior to doing uh, the conventional medicine approach, which was ultimately to have my thyroid ablated. So, um, not that I like to say this, but I do say that conventional medicine failed me and it is my mission to not have it fail you as well. And that's really what propels me every day in my clinic and, you know, drove me to um, have the passion to write this book and to host the Autoimmune Summit is that I really want people to know that they do not have to go to the extremes that I went through in order to um, become symptom free and to have, you know, a healthy life and um, a satisfying life and a symptom free life. Life, um, without medications. I have helped many people um, reverse their Graves disease and many other autoimmune diseases since that time. So Amy, let's talk about that. Give an example of a patient that comes to you. And I know I've sent patients to you as well. So um, Amy does an amazing job with her clinical, amazing, you can see in the background, she has an infrared sauna in her office. <laughs> How cool is that? I mean, seriously. So Amy, talk about a, a typical patient that comes to you and and where they have been with traditional medicine, right? Because they, by the time they get to us in functional medicine, basically um, to the level of our practice, they've been through a lot and a lot of medications and a lot of failed treatments. And the thing is, you know, they just don't feel better. So give us a case example of someone that you've worked with. Yeah, so I mean, there's, you know, I can't say that there's a typical other than as I've become more known for autoimmunity, more people with autoimmunity specifically are seeking me out. But of course, I'll see all kinds from just digestive issues to allergies and eczema to chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, all the way to autoimmunity. So I'll, you know, see anybody of, you know, any shape, size, form, you know, anything, as long as you can get into my office, I'll see you. Um, and uh, most of the people are out there into their ropes, right? They've already tried everything, not only conventional medicine and found that it's, you know, they see, they see the progression that it's just more medicines after more medicines and one stops working, then they move on to the next. And they, they see that, you know, that nobody's trying to help them get them out of this boat. They're just trying to put a bandaid on their symptoms to people who, you know, are taking these medicines and are having bad side effects to people who maybe are taking the meds and they're actually working for them, but they just, you know, don't want to be on the meds to people who've actually tried alternative medicine or done a paleo autoimmune diet to maybe even seen another medical, you know, functional medicine practitioner or a naturopath or somebody. And, and, you know, with those people, I find that they're kind of doing all the right things at all the places that they went before me, but they maybe aren't doing them all at the same time. You know, somebody's changed their diet and somebody else at some point treated them for candida, but nobody was kind of doing all the factors that I talk about in my book all at one time. And that's really what it takes for a lot of people by the time they come to see me. It's not just changing the diet or just fixing the gut or just detoxing from heavy metals. It's kind of doing all those things at one time or in a stepwise fashion. And, um, 
So, you know, I had a woman the other day actually with uh, Graves disease and, um, you know, she was eating kind of a typical American diet, but on the healthy side, you know, um, yogurt and granola for breakfast, you know, salad with, uh, you know, uh, with soy or something on, I mean, you know, things that she thought were healthy, uh, but really aren't in my mind. Um, and she was eating a lot of what are considered very inflammatory foods. And uh, she came in on an immunosuppressive medication for her thyroid and um, was having symptoms from that. And by the time she followed up with me six weeks later, she was off all of her medications, her antibodies had gone away, and uh, her thyroid labs were completely normal. So, and she had been coming in with anxiety and insomnia and all the kind of things that I myself had had. So that's always bittersweet um, to, you know, help somebody else in that same, you know, position that I was in. But quite amazing that within six weeks of seeing me, um, she had already uh, gotten off all of her medication and her labs were completely normal at that point. And, and, and um, maybe she saw me at, at the two month mark, she had followed up with my nutritionist one or two times. And so by the time she had seen my nutritionist, she was off all that. And then it was a month later, she followed up with me. So she had been, it wasn't like she just got off her medicines two days ago. I mean, she, by the time she and I spoke, which was just our second meeting, it had already been a month that she had been off her medication and, uh, and the labs that we were following up at that point were completely normal. That is fantastic. That is fantastic. I love to hear stories like that. It's so empowering. One thing that I tell my clients over and over again is, is to keep the power that you have within you. We don't want to put the power in a prescription pad or a pill, right? It's through nourishing our uh, therapeutic lifestyle changes, a little bit of TLC but also putting it all together. You can't be missing one aspect of it. So with that in mind, you talk about the four pillars in your book. And I want to just refer our listeners right now too to Amy's book. And that is, you can get the book at um, amymyersmd.com forward slash autoimmune solutions, autoimmune, oh, sorry, autoimmune solution book. So amymyersmd.com, autoimmune solution book. Amy, do you have a copy of your book just to hold it up so they can see? I, I do. Yay, I beautiful. Um, so when they go to that link, that's actually where after they've purchased the book at any online retailer, because um, depending on when this goes out, the book is actually going to be released in four days on the 27th of January. So what that link that you just mentioned takes them to, if they order their book before then, there are a lot of free gifts that they get. So um, they're not physically ordering their book there, they're downloading all their free gifts. So go to it, but they can go to that link and then there are links to all the outside retailers from there. So that's a great place to send people. Okay, and, so, um, till yeah. what day are those bonuses available? Till the, tw well, I guess till the 20, midnight on the 26th. So on the 27th, a new page will pop up at that same URL, you know, where they can buy the book. So if you go to that URL, it will give you some links that you can go to buy the book. And then once you do that, you'll get a receipt number and you can enter that number on my website and get a lot of free, um, our four most popular uh, talks from the autoimmune summit that we've kind of referenced um, a free additional recipes. My, my book is a 30 day program and has lots of amazing recipes. Um, but there are even more recipes on my website. And then if you buy five copies or more, you also get a copy of my e course, um, the guide to the healing a leaky gut. Perfect. So let's talk about that. How will people know if they have a leaky gut? So, um, in my book, um, I refer to the autoimmune spectrum. And so we're not healthy one day and sick the next, right? We don't get cancer overnight. We don't get autoimmunity overnight. Really, the only thing that dramatically changes our health overnight is an accident, right? You're in a car and you get hit by, you know, a bus and you have a broken leg or, you know, something has happened. Other than that, our health is really on a continuum. And so I talk about this autoimmune spectrum in my book and where does somebody fall on that spectrum. And we give you little quizzes to kind of see where you fall. If you fall flat out that you've been diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, the, the theory is that you have a leaky gut. So through the work of Dr. Fasano, who's a Harvard researcher and MD, uh, who's done most of the studies about leaky gut, he really believes that that is one of the uh, factors that must be there in order to have autoimmunity. And so I just assume that if you've come into my office, you have a leaky gut to some degree. 
there's testing we can do, but we just sort of assume you have it to some degree. And that's why one of the pillars in my book in a full chapter is on how to heal the gut. Yeah, it's perfect. I mean, to boost the immune system, we can't do it without a healthy gut. Yeah, 80% of your immune system is in the gut. So you know if you've got an immune problem, you've got a gut problem. And that doesn't mean that you have to actually have digestive issues, right? I mean, I have plenty of people who tell me they're having, you know, one to three bowel movements a day. They don't pass gas. They're not bloated. Um, they really feel fine in their digestive area. And still, we find small bowel bacterial overgrowth. We find yeast. We find parasites. We find imbalances in digestive enzymes, imbalances in, in their good bacteria. Mm -hmm. So it's the first place I look when I'm doing testing in my practice, and it's one of the first chapters in my book, is really about how to heal your gut. And I walk people through a four-R program, a four-restorative um, program to healing the gut, and there are quizzes in there to determine, do you have one of these infections I was talking about? And then treatment options that are through natural supplements that you can buy you know, over the counter um, to help rid yourself of those infections. Mm, perfect, yeah. And candida, right? We can see that in the stool analysis yeast, and that's a big issue with autoimmune clients. It's a big issue with almost all of my clients. So, um, so, you know, most people have it that are dealing with a chronic health condition. And um, again, I have lots of blogs and articles and podcasts all free on my website about this if somebody's curious. And then, of course, it's in the book with a, with a quiz to see, you know, what is the possibility or likelihood that you have, you know, that infection. Yeah, perfect. That sounds great. Now, tell us the four pillars that you go over in your book. Um, so the, the first pillar is really looking at the food that we're eating. So, you know, we're getting rid of gluten, grains, and legumes. Uh, we want to heal our gut is the second pillar. We want to tame our toxins. And um, then we want to deal with our stress and infections. And I can certainly walk us through what each one of those means. We've kind of touched a little bit on the, the first and second one about the, the diet and healing the gut. But I think the, the two others, um, and we combine, you know, we combine one together, uh, dealing with the toxins, taming the toxins, and, um, and then looking at your stress and infections are ones that, you know, in my opinion, other previous books have not covered before. You know, I often get asked, you know, how is this different than just a paleo book or how is this different than, you know, other books out there? And again, um, since I'm a clinician and I'm dealing with, you know, literally I've dealt with thousands of people with autoimmunity, it's kind of, um, you know, the one-stop shopping of, of dealing with all those issues all at one time in the book. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about those other two pillars a little bit more that we haven't gone over. Yeah, so, um, so taming the toxins. We live in a very toxic world. And the one thing that I want to say about my book is um, I really feel like – if you follow me or read any of my articles, you probably have a sense of what my book might be like. I mean, what I like to do is give people enough information for them to realize, oh, wow, you know, I should pay attention here, but not so much information that you're a deer in headlights and you just don't know where to turn, right? I mean, too much information can sometimes be incapacitating. You get overwhelmed. And then I offer solutions, real life, easy to follow solutions about what to do. And that's exactly what I do in the book. I have an entire chapter on toxins, but you don't have to worry that all I'm doing is giving you the bad news, right? I give you enough information backed by science. I have over 300 um, you know, references of medical journals and giving you the information so you understand that like, yeah, this is real. Um, and then I give you the practical tips of what to do about it. So when we think about toxins, I mean, how do we get toxins? We get toxins by you know, breathing them in. So what can you do about your air? You don't see one here, but I have you know, HEPA filters in my house and in my office. Um, what can we do about how else do they get in? We ingest them in. So we eat them and we drink them. So what can we do about that? When you go out into the real world and you want to have dinner with your friends, maybe not much you can do about it. So I just recommend when you're home, if you can afford to do this and it's available to you, buying as much as possible organic, grass-fed, pasture-raised, and filtering your water. People think about, oh yeah, I have a water filter on my tap for the water that I'm drinking or maybe even cooking with, but people don't think about the shower and the bath and how that is an enormous place either through breathing or getting in, in through our biggest organ, which is our skin. 
So I talk about putting, you know, either a whole house system, which may not be feasible for some people, or even just getting a simple water shower filter, um, which are relatively inexpensive. And then our skin, like we just talked about, the biggest organ. Where else are we getting all those, you know, toxins? Through our skin. Our body products is huge and people don't even think about it. It's a completely unregulated industry. So, um, you know, even if you're a man, you might be thinking, I'm, you know, I don't use body products. Well, if you brush your teeth, you do. If you put on deodorant, you do. If you shampoo your hair, yeah, or even bathe with, you know, or shower with soap, you potentially are. So again, it's a completely unregulated industry that they are relying on the industry itself to look at these toxins. And for the most part, um, they're looking at this, uh, these ingredients in isolation, not combined with the other ingredients. So how something interacts with something else, we don't know. And then they're looking at the dosage in that one product. And the Environmental Working Agency says, you know, by 10 o'clock, you've gone off to work, you've already used 10 body products, the average person, right? And of course, women are probably going to be a little higher than men um, with the makeup and maybe the perfume and the hairspray and the hair gel and the bath, you know, lotion and the, and the body wash. So, um, and most people don't bathe just once a day, right? I mean, they, they, they bathe two times a day and reapply their makeup twice or three times a day. So, you know, they're getting 10 and 30 times uh, application of these toxins and nobody's testing it at, at that level. Yeah. Um, and I could get in, you know, again, to cleaning products and all kinds of other things about how that industry is, again, testing just one chemical and isolation and whatnot and, and really leaving it up to the company to prove that it's unsafe rather than to prove that it's safe. So um, well, on so that note, Amy, because, you know, with autoimmune disease, what we see a lot more are thyroid nodules, right? We're yeah. A lot more thyroid nodules. Well, make kind of like put one and one together makes two. We're putting creams and makeup and powder and all this stuff on our Face, our gland is getting and fighting with all these endocrine disruptors, these toxins to our system. And what happens? You form a nodule, like the uterus will form a fibroid. Mm -hmm. You know, the fat will form like a lipoma. So you'll get the these nodules. So it is huge in our Sexy Younger You Summit over the last year. We we created a Sexy Younger You skincare line, which is all the paraben free, phthalate free. I mean, all the nasties. It's free of to be a very healthy skincare line because we keep seeing all you know that's we want to have beautiful lovely skin we reduce our fine lines and wrinkles we have that vanity but what we put on our skin has to be clean enough to eat and so that's really important I'll provide a link for that skincare line too but awesome. it's so important it's hard to find sunscreens oh my gosh uh, deodorant you know toothpaste like you said soap the makeup and moisturizers and we can look for our audience ewc.org forward slash skin deep that is my go-to resource to look for in general safer products but like you said it's an accumulation i read one study that said by the time we leave the house in the morning we've had over 50 chemicals on our skin or we've we've exposed ourselves to over 50 chemicals from what we're putting on our skin washing with etc all that you mean just just read a label right yeah, and so we provide those resources as well, and I have a whole, I mean, thick resource section in my book of right. products that I personally use, things that I refer people to. So, I mean, as you mentioned, the sauna in the back, I mean, I really, you know, I, I walk the walk and talk the talk. So I'm not recommending, you know, I've been in the shoes of many of my patients. I've had autoimmunity, and, um, you know, it's it's my weak link, right? You know, I... Um, I still have to be careful and I, and I still, you know, do many things to help my system detox every day and, you know, keep this stuff out. I have water filters on my showers, on the tap. I have my infrared sauna. I have, you know, HEPA filters throughout the house. I try to eat organic exclusively in the house so that I don't have to be a hermit, and never be able to go out with my friends. Right. I mean, that's part of it too. You want, we are social beings. We're beings of community and that's important to have and to not feel like you can't go do something. So, you know, once, once I step out of the house, I have no control over what I'm being exposed to 
for the most part. So the, to the degree that I can, I try to control my at home environment without going nuts or seeming like a crazy person so that when I go out, I feel like, okay, I mean, that is just what that is. We live in a toxic environment. I've done the things that I can while I'm, you know, in control and in my home. And now I'm out here and I, I just really try to be aware, but not to be, uh, you know, scared about it or, um, you know, or, you know, kind oh, of, yeah, really paranoid about it. Cause that yeah, right. to the nocebo effect, right? right. You can't right. get there. Right. So it's a matter to, you know, take control of what you have and be able to make the choices, detox, retox, keep those pathways right. open, mm -hmm. recognize when you need to just slow down, take a break too, which leads us to your um, fourth pillar, which is actually a topic very dear to my heart, stress and inflammation. So talk to us about that. Yeah, so I have actually in there there, and I kind of put infections and stress in the same uh, in the same chapter. And I did that because um, there are several infections that are associated with autoimmunity. Some are Epstein Barr, um, the herpes virus, and then some are bacterial infections. And certainly, when it comes to the herpes and the Epstein Barr viruses, these are viruses that once you have them, and ninety something percent of the population does. They, relate, they remain dormant in your body. And when we go through stressful periods, these can become more activated and then they you know, inflame our immune system and then our immune system gets more stressed. So it's kind of a cyclical um, event that can be happening, which is why I put the two together. But stress um, is something that back in the day, when we were hunter gatherers, we everybody knows though the saber toothed tiger came. I got stressed, you know. I kind of dealt with it, and now I move on, and I'm no longer stressed. Um, I point to a time when I was in Africa on a safari, and I saw uh, this zebra literally get attacked by a by a lion, and then afterwards, literally shake it off and continue on going. We don't do that as, as Americans. We sit and ruminate about it and we fester about it and we, you know, go over it in our mind. Some more than others, you know, some are better able to, you know, kind of let go of those things and other people ruminate. We're concerned about, you know, how did the person text me back and it's been three minutes instead of 30 seconds? Why haven't they texted us back to the never ending ability to look at emails or text? to 100 hour work weeks, to flying in multiple time zones, to the food we're eating, and you know, just simply the lifestyle that we have. And we are very, very stressed beings at all times. That saber toothed tiger is always there. He's rarely, you know, we're not in the day where we really give our, our system a break. And when you're stressed, you know, our immune system initially heightens and is there with all that cortisol to help us fight off that stress. But if chronically over time that cortisol is always elevated, ultimately it ends up suppressing our immune system. It's why somebody you might remember back in college when you were studying for exams and you were able to stay up three nights in a row and you know get through those exams and then finally you get home and you're so excited, you finally have a month off and you're home for Christmas and boom, you're laid out flat in bed for a week with some terrible illness um, because you know what happened is your body was able to have that cortisol get you through that massive stressor and you had it so elevated boom it suppressed your immune system and you caught a cold on the plane home you know to for christmas yeah so when I, when I did my summit you know the the interesting thing to me is i interviewed 40 experts in functional medicine and nutrition and and uh, research surrounding uh, autoimmunity and, you know, I, I would have somebody spending an entire hour talking about leaky gut or gluten. And at the end, I asked every speaker, what are your three takeaway points? And, you know, I'm expecting everybody to be like unanimously, don't eat gluten, fix your gut, you know. And certainly people said those things. But more people than not, even if they had just given a whole talk on the gut, say, stress. you got to deal with your stress. And that really kind of, you know, hit it home for me that, you know, here are all these top experts talking about, you know, all these factors influencing. And I totally thought like literally every one of them will say, give up gluten. Like that's the easy thing to do. And that's the number one thing you can do. And of course they felt that way, but their take home point was actually to deal with their stress. Yeah. So frequently I'll get people who are doing everything to the T perfect, right. And then they're working a hundred hours a week or they're in a horrible marriage fighting with their husband all the time. And you know, it's like supplements are not going to get rid of it. 
You know, eating a great diet is not going to get rid of that. It's going to help. I mean, if you're eating a crappy diet, not taking any supplements, you know, it's probably going to be worse. But, you know, all, the greatest diet in the world and all the supplements in the world are not going to overcompensate for massive stressors like that in your life. Right. Yeah, and I think that's a key point, you know, in um, my practice, we say resentment is lack of self-care, right? Resentment is lack of self-care. So when you're having feelings of a j lack of job satisfaction, feel like, you know, angry, resentful, irritable, and, you know, fighting with your partner, your spouse, you're like, oh, what happened to this relationship that I love? I'm disconnected. What happened to this job I love? I'm, I feel disconnected. And that stress disconnect is hugely um, I mean, that disconnect is hugely related to stress. I mean, it is inseparable from the stress. So it's just like when patients have PMS, right? If you only hate your, only hate your husband two weeks out of each month, it's probably not your husband, right? Mm -hmm. So it's that same situation. When you're driving high on stress, cortisol and oxytocin can't compatibly coexist. So we feel that disconnect. And we have to do exactly what you said is that, restore our self-care, restore, refill our tank through, uh, what are some of the key things that you recommend to, re you know, to refill our tanks or to do that self-care and stress relief? What do you do with your crazy hectic schedule preparing for a wedding? Yeah, so I have a list in the book of, of suggested things that one can do. And they actually, Harper Ones, who published my book, and they asked me, you know, we really, we want you to come up with a, you know, five minute meditation and, you know, do this thing for people. And I said, I, I'm not doing that. I said, I don't do that. Like, why am I going to, like, I'm not going to tell somebody, I mean, everything in this book is everything that I do. So I'm not going to, like, tell people that they need to do this thing when I'm not doing it. So, um, for some people, that may be what they need, um, and and that you know may be relaxing for them. That is not relaxing for me. Getting in my sauna is relaxing for me. Going to get a massage is relaxing for me. Going to the gym, going on a walk, just getting down on the floor and playing with my puppy is relaxing for me. So you know it's um, it's individualized for my fiance. It's going to play golf. So um, we have a whole list of things you can do. You know, sing call a friend, go have tea, pray, meditate, uh, go to yoga, get in the sauna. I mean, it's whatever you find is relaxing for you. And I'm not going to tell you what's what I think should be relaxing for you, right? That actually might be stressful for you. So it's, it's sort of like the diet. There's no one right answer. You got to figure out what, what works for you. So what we do in the book or what I do in the book is give you a full list of things that are examples that I've done. Patients have told me have been helpful for them um, and let you come up with out of that list, you know, what, what is helpful an art class, painting. I mean, I'm making crafts for my wedding and people are like, how do you have time? And I'm like, I'm actually loving this. You know I mean? That's, this is what I, you know, I'm, I'm having fun, you know, planting succulents for all my guests. And, you know, I'm not thinking about something else. That's perfect. Exactly. That's active meditation. I love it. So yeah. um, Amy, you work also with busy moms and dads and kids. So what, do you, how do you incorporate this into the American home? Yeah, so um, I tell everybody the key is being prepared. So I, you know, I don't have children, uh, but I am a busy person and I travel a lot. I'm planning a wedding. I just, you know, have a book launch. I mean, I literally, I mean, I'm like just running my practice is busy. Just, you know, launching a book is busy and just planning a wedding is busy and I'm doing all three. Mm -hmm. So um, preparation is the key. Uh, and we talk about that in the book. I mean, I think Brianne uh, Williams, who's my nutritionist, she helped with the meal plans in the back um, because she's, you know, working with these, with people every day as am I, but, you know, she's really hearing the feedback. This is hard. That's that. And so we, the, the meal plan is really great that we, a lot of times, and I got this feedback, my parents were, were doing a diet type thing. And my father said, you know, this is like ridiculous. It's like, we just finished, you know, making this huge meal. And we have half of it left over. The next day we're doing the prepping this whole other huge meal. And so I heard that. I thought, well, I'm not going to do that, right? I'm going to utilize leftovers because that's what we tell our patients to do. That's what we do personally. Um, we recommend a couple of cooking days a week, um, doing things in crock pots, in Dutch ovens, and making really big batches of stuff, you know, bone broths or chicken soup, or just many, many of our recipes are one sort of pot recipes. And then you make it and you have, 
you know, multiple, I mean, we recommend getting Pyrex glass dishes, you know, packing it up and sticking it in the freezer. And so on those times, because when you're trying to eat like this, you're eating fresh food and you could literally be at the grocery store every other day, is, um, is putting those things in the freezer. Brian has other wonderful tips in the book about, you know, pre-chopping your vegetables, washing them, things like that, so that um, if you kind of spend a couple of hours on one or two days a week, then everything's prepped for you. And, you know, there, there are other things that maybe we don't want you eating every day, but even some packaged foods that, you know, we all have to resort to when we're traveling or caught in that bind. I mean, I carry around some beef stick um, and some nuts in my purse so that if I'm on the go and I got caught somewhere, when I travel, I make an extra meal the night before and make sure I take that with me. I'm searching out the Whole Foods and making sure my hotel is near that. I mean, it takes time. I'm, you know, I don't want to lie to somebody and tell them that it that it doesn't take time. But the key is to be prepared. And as this becomes, you know, more common of a lifestyle, and my program is called the Myers Way, and I call it that because it's a way of life. This is not a quick fix. This is a way of life. We want you to change your entire lifestyle and this to be your new norm. And as more people are doing that more convenient type food places are popping up. And yes, it may not be 100% exactly like you'd want it to be if you cooked it in your home, but it's a heck of a lot better alternative than, you know, than whatever else is out there. So as people are changing their lifestyles and demanding this, you know, I'm finding stuff popping up in in, you know, the airports and even convenience stores of, you know, a grass fed beef jerky or, you know, some nuts that, you know, have sea salt on them or, you know, I mean, whatever, whatever the case may be, um, it, it is becoming more commonplace and a little bit easier than it was even a year or two ago to, to eat like this. Yeah, absolutely agree. And I think my favorite thing is carrying some you know, healthy nuts and some organic or grass fed beef jerky. Love it. Mm -hmm. And those are things that aren't going to go bad in the, in the car, in your purse. So I encourage that as well as um, having, you know, filtered water or your water bottle with you and just making sure you stay hydrated because that's a super key. So I want to, I want to thank you so much. And again, give people your link for the book for your autoimmune solution. You said in on the 26th, it's available in all bookstores. And the 27th. On yeah. the 27th. Okay, great. Yeah. And then the also they're can, available till the 26th. Okay. And then also they can go to amymyersmd.com forward slash the autoimmune solution. Dot, uh, that's it, right? Yeah. The autoimmune solution. Okay, there we go. So I uh, encourage all our reader, all our listeners to join in and, and follow up with you and get that book and your bonuses, which I thank you for offering. And I love the work you're doing, Amy. Congratulations on your wedding. Thank and you. we look forward to hearing more about you. I love the work that you put out. And I read your emails and your, the information you give is so valuable. I appreciate it. Well, love thanks so much. How you're doing all of this too. Thank Robert. you. And just so everybody knows, my entire wedding is going to be grain-free, gluten-free, dairy-free. Our wedding cake is from Almond Flour. So, you know, I'm the, 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 where we're hosting it said, well, we could do that for you and then do this for the guests. And I said, no way. You know, I'm showing them that you know, this is a way that you can have an elegant, you know, amazing event and the food can still be great. So if you follow me on Facebook or my blog, um, I'll definitely have something posted so that everybody can see just how an incredible event can still be done, you know, in the realm of what I talk about. Mm, I love that. That's awesome. Bravo. Keep up the good work. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Oh, thank you. Thanks for being here. Look all right. forward to talking more. And to all our Couch Talk listeners, make sure you've signed up at www.quebecahealth.com forward slash Couch Talk to get the link to the podcast. It's also going to be available as a podcast on iTunes at Quebec Health. And I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Myers. Bye. <laughs>